welcome back everyone. My name is Ultimar and we're going to be continuing our let's play of Wrath of the Righteous. Where we left off last time, we had just finished the dragon quest. We got our little dragonling. We're going to head back to Dresden. We're going to grab... Actually, we can teleport back to Dresden. What am I doing? Wasting time is what I'm doing. We're going to go back into the Citadel and grab Regil because we have his quest to do. And then head over to the Hell Knight encampment. I'm sure that they're going to want to talk to us about whatever it is they want to talk to us about. I wonder if they're going to attack us. I'm curious. Oh, someone wants to talk. Greyboar looks as pleased as a cat that brought a mouse to its owner. You know, Commander, I've just made a most curious discovery. I have a habit of walking around the fortress every once in a while to make sure it's secure. I keep an eye out for any weak spots or vulnerabilities. Well, in my last security check, I decided to inspect the warden's keys and I found something on one of them. Greyboar produces a small ball of some yellowish substance wax. The servants have complained that this key has been sticking recently, and no wonder. Someone took a wax mold of this key, but they didn't remove all of the wax. Some of it probably got into the lock, but guess which door this key opens. I'll give you a hint, there's only one other copy of this key and it's hanging from your belt because it's the key to your personal chambers. It seems that somebody wanted to get inside without permission. Either you have a mysterious admirer lying in ambush beside your bed, or you're being hunted by an assassin. They managed to get quite close to their target, so they clearly have skills, even if they're a bit careless. Who's behind this attempt on my life? Unfortunately, I do not know the identity of the client, but the fact that your enemy found their way inside the fortress and managed to get this close to you makes me think that you're being hunted by a true professional. There's a high likelihood that they're a member of a guild. What should I do? Grey Boar smiles grimly. I think she should let your enemies try. Their agents have already infiltrated our ranks, so it'll be difficult to prevent an attack. They'll make an attempt on your life sooner or later. Don't let your guard down. Don't walk around unarmed. Don't stand near windows. Only eat fresh fruits and vegetables and only drink spring water that has been collected by one of your most trusted allies. I doubt the assassin will wait long. The attempt on your life will likely happen on the first night you spend in your chambers. Keep your weapon ready, and I will, with your consent, stand guard outside your room without drawing attention. Do I have your permission? Sure. You made the right decision. I'll find a good hiding place near your chambers. I don't want to scare anyone away. Oh, and somebody else wants to uh, talk. Harmatam. Commander. Glad to see you back with us. Captain Harmatan has barely changed since your last meeting, but his glare is now even heavier than before, and his arms and face bear new scars. You've arrived just in time. There's unrest within your forces again. Unfortunately, once you returned, so did the wary. They're turning the soldiers against you. I'm afraid we're dealing with an open mutiny. They're agitating for the army to abandon Dresden and march to eyes. To her majesty's aid, if we don't stop them, the outcome may be disastrous. Let's meet with the wary. I don't believe it'll be hard to convince them that their plan is pure madness. We'll gather loyal officers and send them to speak with the soldiers, unarmed, and with an open heart. We'll convince them to turn their backs on those madmen and send and their mutiny. Mutinies must be suppressed with absolute severity. We surround all units, engage in the revolt, then we arrest and hang the agitators publicly. Behind every rebellious leader is a very angry second-in-command who dreams of promotion. We'll just hint at the fastest way to get it, and the mutiny will fade away by itself, with the added benefit of refreshing our staff. We can get Charismatic, which gives generals plus 15 to combat morale. We can execute people, which uh, any unit the army any, any unit in the army gains plus 3 bonus to combat morale when damaged. We can get Bloodthirsty Officers, which uh, is less good. We can parlay and get some morale. Or we can Test of Strength, which is plus 1 to combat morale. Each turn. No, we're just going to do the... Parlay with the wary. Praise be to your voice of reason, Commander. I'll send negotiators immediately. I don't know what we can use or we can possibly expect from this parlaying. My heart tells me that nothing good will come of it. If you play along with the mutineers now, another mutiny will soon follow. This is a bad decision. Seriously, I can't think of a worse idea. I stand by it. I'll keep you up to date on how things unfold. As soon as there's any developments, I will reconvene the council. What do you want? Commander, glad to see you back in head of the military council. That decision is required of you more urgently than ever. Here's the situation. We don't have an army, in the strictest sense, and the enemy is putting up much more of a fight than previously. Judging by the reports, the demons are relying less and less on the armies of their mortal servants and the power of simple blades and more and more on magic and dark sorceries. We must respond in kind by bolstering our forces with expert spellcasters. I'm prepared to send an order to Canaveris at once, requesting the necessary reinforcements. I propose we support our army with bardic magics. Bards learn lure all kinds of spells in their travels, and their songs can inspire our warriors and give them strength to fight. These demons know their vile magics, but something stronger than that, the power of the gods. We need some war priests in our army. Their spells in our army. Their spells will chase away the darkness and heal the wounded. We would do well to invite monks into our army. They've been hardened by a lifetime of training, and even demonic corruption cannot harm them. 
If you're in need of a mage as well versus in the art of killing, you should contact Daggermark Poisoners Guild. Their alchemists are second to none when it comes to making deadly poisons or utilizing them in battle. Alright, what's a war priest look like? All church guards are promoted to war priests, which make them pretty strong. Alternatively, all church guards are promoted to monks and they become murder machines. Oh my god, 611 hit points? Are you kidding me? That's insane. Also, decent damage. Cool. Uh, poisoners, so we get assassins. Less huge damage, like truly massive damage, but uh, AC 20 and 158 hit points. What's the AC on these ones? AC 26, okay. And then bards are moderately okay at hitting things. Bards are the worst one, I think. Let me check the war priests again. Medium damage, decent hit points, D, and kind of low armor class. Monks have an insane amount of hit points. 611 hit points each is a lot. A damage reduction, and they also do a pretty good amount of damage. I think I might take the monks, honestly. Monks could handle demonic magic. The demons won't be too pleased when they realize their spells are powerless against our warriors, and it will do the troops some good to have an example of discipline and fortitude in clear view at all times. I'll send a letter to Canabras immediately, requesting a group of spellcasters to be sent to our aid. I'm certain they'll arrive soon, Commander. Does that mean we can recruit monks? I am kind of curious. And then we're going to rest, do our assassination attempt, and then we'll uh, go to the Hell Knight place. Alright, we can also maybe rank up. Decrees, we can study the unusual crystal. Uh, while well, we're already doing that, and the Bardish we're doing currently, so we can't do any of those things. We could do uh, Heaven Warriors, issue that decree, and then we'll do nothing else, because we don't have any military ones to do, it looks like. Okay, we only have one day left on the Bardish one, so we should be able to do another Logistics one after this. Oh, I was going to look at Monks. I'm an idiot. Clearly, I'm not braining very well today. That's okay. Take a quick peek at monks. I don't know why it takes so long to load into this area. The citadel is not that big of an area, and it doesn't have a lot of complexity to it, I don't think. It could have more than I believe there is, but it's a very small map. Like, I don't think that the... Uh... How do we recruit? All right. Where's our monks? So we can buy 18 monks. Unfortunately, we don't have room for them. We could make room. We could get rid of, like... Not the Davis, because they're actually really quite good, and we can get lots of them. Maybe the champions. Just send them out. Get some monks. Interestingly, I think the champions hit harder than the monks. Oh, not quite. They do more damage, but they have less to hit. And we'll have some pretty good hardened veterans soon as well so let's get rid of our champions and west monks so we go bloop we go bloop we go bloop and we go bloop and then we move this secondary army over to go join the paladins you are now a small army of your own cool good luck and then we go recruit monks yes how do we have, how are we out of money again? We're always out of money. This is gonna be the poorest of the playthroughs. All right, now we have some monks, cool. Back into the thing to do other things. We're gonna rest for the night to see if we get assassined and then we'll uh, deal with the rest of it. Go to do the Hell Knight thing. I like how our other character is already level 20, just cause it's that fast to get level 20 when you're the only character in your group. Let's go have a quick siesta. Really quickly, though. Anyone got spells to learn? Like, specifically you, because we're going to be bringing you along. Actually, I don't really care, to be honest. Full disclosure, I could not care less about Regil's spells with this group. Your spells per day. You're fine. You're all good. And I think I give her spells too. Yeah, okay, let's go sleep. There we go. Assassin time. She couldn't sneak out of her chambers past me. 
I'm just kind of sitting here, invisible. And here's the unwelcome intruder. Lone assassin. Lots of life. The assassin lies on the floor, spluttering and gasping for breath. He reaches out feebly for his sword, but to no avail. It's nothing personal, my dear colleague. Lie still and don't do anything stupid. We'll let you die with dignity. Don't execute him just yet, Commander. The assassin could prove useful. He might be a valuable source of information. You have broken the law by committing treason. Actually, are you ready to answer my questions, assassin? Piss off. Shouldn't have said that. Now to make you bleed. A pity. I'm wearing my new gloves today, and I didn't want to ruin them. If you want to survive, you better start talking. The assassin sneers mockingly. I'm not falling for your lies. It doesn't matter what I do. You're going to kill me. I chuckle ominously. So you wanted to kill me? Oh, just you wait. I'll make you regret your treachery. Greybor raises his hand in protest. Not yet, Commander. This may be our only chance to discover who ordered the assassination. But if we kill him quick now, we may never find out. Alright, make it quick. I'm going to have to evil this one. Greybor, make him talk. Greybor puts on a pair of brass knuckles and covered in gruesome looking spikes. He clenches his massive fists and the prisoner goes pale with fear. Greybor paces around him slowly. I have to warn you, this is really going to hurt. The assassin looks terrified. Please don't, I was just doing my job. Yes, and so am I. Greybor hits the assassin squarely in the jaw with one swift practice motion. The spikes tear into the prisoner's skin, ripping it to shreds. But Greybor ignores his muffled screams. He continues to beat the prisoner with a series of steady, methodical blows, like a cook tenderizing a thick slab of beef. That he's using axes, clearly. Stop, I'll tell you everything. The words come out in a scream. The man is howling like some kind of wild animal. This cold-hearted killer has been reduced to tears. The pain has made him a sobbing, sniveling mess. Who are you? I'm Loxter Daly from Galt. I joined the Crusaders eight years ago, but I used to be an investigator. When I lived in Galt, I served the Cabinet of Skulls, our nation's ruling council. I hunted down our enemies, plutocrats, foreign spies, traitors of the revolution. I served my homeland as best as I could. Then there was a coup. Citizen Goss seized control of Galt. That scoundrel formed the Revolutionary Council and accused the old regime of betraying the nation. They began to hunt down people like me. While the Grey Gardeners found me, they were the official guard of the Galton Revolution and its most bloodthirsty executioners. They said if I confessed publicly and told everyone about the crimes committed by the Cabinet of Skulls, they would spare my life. I refused. I'd be executed along with- or if I refused, I'd be executed along with my family. They were good at their job, those pigs, so I could either rot in prison or sentence my family to death. So I signed everything they asked of me. They locked me up in the dungeons, but then someone made me an offer. I don't know who they were, but they must have had important connections among Galt's political and social elite. They told me that they would give me my freedom if I worked for them. They didn't tell me the exact nature of the work, but I could guess. If they wanted me, it probably meant they needed someone to do their dirty work. The assassin chuckles grimly. I agreed, and the next day I was sent to Mendev under escort. The official story was that the nation had granted me a chance to atone for my crimes, and that I would have the right to return to my homeland after 20 years of exemplary service. My employers have only reached out to me twice since then. The first time I had to take care of an overly eager inquisitor in Canabras, who was poking around in the Tower of Estrad, and the second time I received an order to kill you. Greybor appre uh, chuckles appreciatively. They clearly know how to recruit and manage a large network of agents. They found an expert rescued him from the deadly dungeons of Galt, then placed him in Mendev undercover until they needed him. And they've only used him twice in eight years. They must have plenty of other agents at their disposal. Why'd you try and kill me? I received a letter. I was promised a large amount of gold for your head. The assassin loses his composure. You can hear rising panic in his voice. And I have a family back in Galt. Do you know what it's like living in fear that you'll be taken away? You never know when they'll come for you. Anyone can be accused of treachery against the revolution, associating with the nation's enemies or having disloyal thoughts. I wanted to get out of there. I wanted a peaceful life. A peaceful place to live, so I agreed. Yes, it was for the money. So what if you disapprove? I don't care. How'd you get into my chambers? The assassin scoffs. I've done things like this before, you know. The place is designed to keep out invading armies, but a single skilled assassin can slip through easily. I studied the patrol routes, stuck to the shadows, and the guards were none the wiser. Who hired you? I don't know. I was contacted anonymously, and I was instructed to de oh, destroy the letters upon receiving them. The only names they gave me were the names of my victims. After you killed me, were you supposed to meet them in a specific location to get paid? Yes. At a place on the high road that leads west from Dresden, it's called the Dry Crossroads. It's a quiet, inconspicuous spot. I know the place. We just need to flush them out of hiding and finish off the remaining assassins. 
It should probably just be the two of us, Commander. The more people we bring with us, the less chance we have of taking them by surprise. Grey War stares coldly at the captured assassin. His voice is like steel. We don't need this one anymore. I sentence you to death. You end the life of this traitorous scoundrel with one swift, clean blow. At least we got a little bit of... Lawful in there. We did do a bit of evil, unfortunately. We didn't have a choice. Thus, I have scientifically proved... Did we already rest? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Time to leave now. We We're gonna do the Hell Knights first, I still think. Uh, we'll bring along Regil instead of Lan, I think. Yeah, Lan's our only cleric, technically, but the fights that we're going to be getting into, I think, in these next little areas are not ones where we need a high-powered cleric. And, to be fair, Lan isn't a high-powered cleric to start with. Um, how do I get to the outpost? Guess we'll find out. Oh, that's our army. I'm an idiot. Damn it. Alright, go back. Why was I... I was like, well, yeah, 40 movement points. That makes perfect sense to me. 17 hours. Do we bother to level up Regil? No, we're okay. We really need more morale. I think we did one day, right? So the Bardish should be done. The relic can be augmented. And we have the two other one. We have Enchanting Voice. One of the units ran into a monster with a hundred female heads. They were singing in sweet voices, and the singing was putting both the crusaders and demons to sleep. One death knight slew the creature, but even death did not silence the heads. The soldier cut them off, cut off one of them, gagged it, and brought it to Dresden. What should be done with the head? We can sell it for some finance points. We can use it against the demons, which is a demonic lullaby, which means we can sleep something. We can heal. We get plus one to reduction of losses, which is definitely what we're going to take. It's the best one by far. The craftsmen of the crusade, who were willing to reforge Nemarius's burning brand into a weapon filled or filled with his flaming fury, now to decide what it'll be made into. Probably the Bardish. Oh my god, that's a huge lore thing. It's a plus five weapon, and it's the intermediate step, so there's more that will come of it. But let's take the Bardish. Decrees. We can do strength and diplomatic connections. Why not? Do that. It only takes one day. We're not doing Xanthir's experiments because we don't need to with this group. Let's enter the location. Alright. I hope that we're not going to get killed here. Let's quick save. Follow if you dare. Armagers are just chilling out. Good. Where are the leaders of the Hell Knights? Oh, there. We are completely surrounded. This is not ideal. The Hell Knight outpost welcomes you with sharp and inhospitable silence. Tall figures in black and imposing armor tower over you. There are no threats or greetings, nothing at all. Rigel takes his place in the formation near the pair of lictors Renth, Ty, and Diothan, but slightly ahead of them. There's a barely noticeable shift in his posture and demeanor. It's almost like he's getting ready to perform a wearisome and unpleasant task. You all know why we're gathered here. Today, the Order's emissaries will hear the results of my investigation into the actions of the individual known as the Commander of the Fifth Crusade, as well as the, decide the fate of said individual. Fine, I will hear what you have to say. I will state the facts as they are known to me. You reserve the right to speak in your own defense. Regil's voice remains cold and unpleasantly impersonal. Impersonal. I'll start with the main reason for today's assembly, the source of the commander's supernatural powers. It had been hidden from us until recently, but now it is clear. The emergence of these abilities was caused by Arilu Vorlesh, a criminal and an enemy that unequivocally and unconditionally must be destroyed. Whether the commander is her associate or an involuntary tool is yet to be determined. I'm neither. Aurelu has no means of controlling me, and any scholar of magic can attest to that. Your openness, your appeal to expert opinion, and your rational approach do you credit, Commander. They'll be taken into account. Let us continue. Aside from the source of the power, there's also the matter of application. The Commander partially managed to overcome the destructive nature of her inherent powers. Unfortunately, she then went to a different extreme and displayed excessive virtue. 
This excess is a flaw, though not an inexcusable one. Whatever my power is, I only use it to oppose the world wound and to benefit the crusade. Rigel pays no attention to your words. We must also scrutinize the commander's temperament. The main question of interest to us was whether we could rely on such an ally. What if she became a puppet in the hands of our enemies? To determine this, I took the liberty of staging a test that featured several treacherous demons. The result of this test was exceptional. The commander is capable of seeing through demonic deception and can successfully resist their tricks if she wishes to. I say nothing. Enough. Paralictor Eminos Renth raises his hands, calling for silence. He and the other Paralictors exchange glances and they nod in turn. We have seen and heard enough, the verdict is clear. What we have heard is sufficient to conclude that the accusations against the commander are unsubstantiated. We have no reason to suspect our ally of treason or associating with Aurelia Vorlesh. From now on, the Orders are prepared to provide all possible assistance to the Fifth Crusade. Rigel listens very closely, sometimes nodding in accord with the words of his fellow Paralictor, then states in a wary and disagreeable voice, I disagree and officially dispute this decision. Do you intend to maintain your cooperation with the individual known as the commander of the Fifth Crusade, even after everything you have heard? Unbelievable. This stupid and perfidious decision puts you on the same page with, with the demonic lackey we have been discussing. Paralyctor Derenge is absolutely correct. No one has better knowledge or more in-depth experience in this matter than him. Derenge, that is enough. We are not going to argue like cantankerous old men. This decision is final, and you know you have no means to dispute it. That is correct. I do not, but I have a different way of correcting your stupid, childish mistake. Regil narrows his yellow eyes and gives you a piercing glare. I hereby challenge you to a duel, Commander. This is irresponsible of you, Derenge, but lawful. We cannot interfere, even though I very much want to. The Orders have refused to support you, and you're making a fool of yourself to soothe your wounded pride. Such behavior is not befitting of a paralictor. As you wish. Clear the room and make the necessary preparations. Oh, Regil, you have no idea what you're in for. Spread out, give some space for the duel. I declare the start of the duel. May justice be done. Oh, a test of my abilities. I'm glad I didn't give him any good loot. You should have run. This will hurt. Enough of this farce and this petty squabbling. The verdict has been passed and is not subject to an appeal. The Hell Knight Orders have no complaints against the Fifth Crusade or its commander. Indeed, we are now confident we can completely trust you, Commander. From this moment, not only will the Hell Knights continue fighting in the World Wound as allies of the Crusaders, we will also put our elite squads at, under your command. The World Wound must be closed and we will assist you to the best of our ability. Aminus gives Regil a steely glare. We also apologize for the actions of Paralictor Regil Derenge. He has overstepped his bounds and made a number of other questionable decisions that make us doubt his competence. He is henceforth removed from command of his chapter and stripped of his Paralictor rank, pending further orders from the God Claw headquarters. Regil's expressionless face is impossible to read. He appears to be unfazed as always. He simply shrugs in response to Eminus' words. I hope there'll be no further misunderstandings between us. There won't be, Commander. The purpose of this council was to eliminate them. Regil, now no longer a Paralictor, does not move or make her sound, but instead casts a quick glance that lets you know he would like to speak in private. Regil, dude, man. I believe I owe you an explanation, Knight Commander. Regil does not appear to be shaken or perturbed by what just happened. His stern expression changes slightly. For a fleeting moment, becoming calmer and more pensive. I'm listening. First, I'd like to paint you a picture of the situation I found myself in shortly before we met. I was one of the first to receive the information about an individual, supposedly chosen by the gods, who appeared in Canabris. This message was followed by the news that the Queen of Mendev had appointed this person as the commander of the new crusade. The Orders reacted in every conceivable way. I imagine that you and anything even remotely related to you was being discussed in every corner of every Hell Knight Citadel. I did not have to be present to imagine the words spoken and the suggestions offered, nor the chaos. The Orders often cannot agree, even among themselves. Anticipating the upcoming arguments, I submitted a petition and volunteered to attach myself to the new commander in order to assess her 
leadership and discover the true nature of her powers. But a good strategist looks far into the future. The role I gave myself was just the beginning. I watched and prepared contingency plans for every potential turn of events, such as if you turned out to be a menace that must be destroyed, or if you turned out to be a valuable asset and our best hope of triumphing over the abyssal host, an ally who must be supported no matter the cost. I have been a Hell Knight for most of my life. I know the orders like the back of my hand. All our might, determination, and glory, as well as our weaknesses. Unfortunately, it was clear that not all of us would appreciate the tremendous potential of such an important piece showing up on the board. I could write dozens of reports, give you the most stellar of testimonies, and that still wouldn't be enough to convince the skeptics. Go on. Only a military tribunal would be able to resolve the issues between the Crusade commander and the Hell Knights. As formal a hearing as possible to assure the orders they had considered the case and had the chance to pronounce a verdict. The occasion also called for a sacrifice. A symbolic victim would reinforce the impression of a successful trial and a unanimous decision. Nothing bolsters the reputation of the accused like the public humiliation of their accuser. I was the obvious choice for the role. So I organized this tribunal and did my best to ensure that the Paralictors arrived at the only correct decision, given the circumstances. Of course, this meant that my reputation would be destroyed and I would be stripped of my rank. But that's inconsequential. Such losses are acceptable. I make no great fuss about the bleaching, but I do realize the full scope of its effects. The Fifth Crusade is quite possibly my last campaign. The pressures of time push people to extreme measures, and I am no exception. My aim was more than simply to prevent the Hell Knights from rallying against you. I wanted to strengthen your alliance to give you a powerful army, a strong asset in the confrontation with the Abyssal Host. My gambit was successful. I am satisfied. Thank you, Rigel. I appreciate your sacrifice. Your gratitude is unnecessary. I did what had to be done. Now that we are entirely clear, let us return to the main objective. I still hope to see the matter of the world wound resolved once and for all. Alrighty, well, we did the Regil thing. Cool. Could have been a lot worse, I guess. Also, we received an item called the Wrecking Devil. Plus five axiomatic nullifying gnome hook hammer. Cool. Well, area exit. Leave. And how far away is this? That's Baphomet Shrine. The Dry Crossroads. Okay. We'll go back to Dresden. We're only taking our main character in Greybore. We can still do this this video, I think. I can't believe we only have to take Greybor, which is weird. It seems like an ambush, but I'm not too concerned. I mean, our main character is pretty good at murdering things. We are heavily encumbered. I just realized this. We're not going to be able to move once we arrive there. Do we have to go there with just Greybor? That can't possibly be right. I think we just need to bring him there. Let's try and bring everyone. Worst case, they sell us to come back. They can't... They can't possibly mean for us to just have two people in our group because there's no way we could carry the amount of gear for six people. With <laughs> just a group of two people. Like, what if you were a caster? 
I mean, we're a monk. We don't have a lot of strength, but Caster might even have way less strength. Let's just bring everyone like normal. Neat. Oh, sorry. I did want you there, Amber. You, you, you. Uh, I'm missing someone. Graveborn. Do, do, do. None of you. Had a moment there. Alright, let's go up to the crossroads. Maybe we just need Graveboard to be in the... How do we get there? Is it this way? I'm hoping it's this way. It does appear... No, wrong way. Stop, 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 stop. Wrong way. Go this way. And then this way? There we go. I do want to enter this location... Oh, it just does have the two of us. Find the assassin's accomplices. Okay. I'm off. There they are. Someone's coming. I think one of ours. No, it's not. The commander's here to arms. I'll make you pay. Steps to Mira. It's Horzella. This is the first time you've seen Horzella in person. She looks at you in surprise, and you can see in her displeasure. What are you doing here? Oh, were you expecting someone else? Well, then you should have hired some more, someone more competent. That pathetic fool didn't stand a chance. You're right, I need the services of a professional. If you kill this mortal, I'll grant you a place in my guild. To the abyss with you. I keep my word. I thought we got along well. Why do you want me dead? Horzella's voice rises triumphantly. Father will see how wrong he was about me. He'll reward me with his favor when I present him with your head. I'll be the greatest of Baphomet's daughters once more, and that half-mortal upstart Vorlesh will crawl on her knees before me. I'll rout the armies of the Lady in Shadow, then I'll cut down Daskari's lackeys and take his army for myself. And once that's done, it'll be your turn, Crusaders. I'll make you kneel before the Lord of Beasts. It's very brave of you to appear in person. I applaud your courage. I want to personally witness your demise, Horzala snaps angrily. Do you think I'm scared of you? <laughs> you have no idea how powerful I am. I'm Hepzimir- er, I am. Hepzimir is nothing compared to me. And now my father has freed me from those accursed seals. I am no longer bound. I am Baphomet's daughter, the strongest of his offspring. I have reclaimed my rightful place. And I will- And now I will destroy you. Great boy, what are our chances here? Hmm, the assassin sent to kill you wasn't particularly confident. A mere amateur. I doubt other Horzala's other henchmen are much more impressive. We'll strangle them all like kittens, Commander. Horzala's eyes burn with hatred. She glares at the dwarf and gnashes her teeth angrily. You lured the wrong beast to your trap. These amateurs think too highly of themselves. It's time for them to see a real professional at work. Their life ends Sweet here. dreams, everyone. We are gonna die, probably. Um, we could go in and fight, but I don't think we're going to yet. We're gonna get this on us. And that's gonna be it for our turn. We do get a surprise round. We're also dealing damage to people, which is fine. Um, need you to like mark this one and then move back for now. That actually really, really hurt. Yaws did something that did a bunch of damage. We're not done buffing though. Let's five foot step away. All right, Rachel can get in here, or not Rachel, uh, Graybor can get in here. Do a little bit of damage. He will get energy drained. Yaws is kicking my ass. I need to kill Yaws like right now. Don't hold back. I am your Didn't enemy. quite kill him. Do we even have blind fight? It's your time to cease to One hit, come on. We're fine. Still. Let's make this and quick. Here's the reinforcements. Are we late? I mean, you are. Guys, why would it reset? <laughs> that's annoying. Okay, that's fine. We'll uh, buff before we go in this time, and then we can just fight Yaws. I love how it reset the uh, initiative order, and then she got another turn right away to kill me. That was kind of bullshit, honestly. That's fine. I don't even know what I want to give this guy. I haven't used him in a long time, nor do I really care about his character build. I don't know, just give him, like, blind fight. Good enough. Ah, uh, fine. 
Ooh, we can actually give him something okay here. Um, I don't know. Give him, like... Yeah, Confounding Blades is good. Alright, done. Let's buff up. So we need... Let's grab this one on yourself. Then we'll grab Sunwark on yourself. And then we'll grab... Eagle Soul. And Ages of the Faithful. And Sacred Nimbus. Alright. That should be more than enough to deal with this fight. Just get here. Fast. Blah 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 blah. Blah blah blah. Blah 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 blah. And that one. Let's go murder this guy. He's the first one that has to die. Or she. I don't even know what... It's a he or she. Simply business. <laughs> Almost killed it. In one go. I think it's an incubus, so technically I think it's male. Not that it really matters. Run. Oh, I don't think we need the reinforcements. You're in my way. This will hurt. Victory is worth the pain. Great boy's gonna die because it's gonna reset the initiative order. Time to work. Oh no, it originally just shows up. Cool. I will and then immediately shoots her in the back. Easy enough fight, once the Yaws is dead. Yaws did a ton of damage. Rosala is curled up on the ground in anguish. She slams her fist down angrily. This isn't how it's supposed to end. Why? Why are you so damn strong, mortal? And you, shorty, foul little worm, you ruined everything. Greybor smirks beneath his beard. Now why would you say such a horrible thing, Rosala? Don't you know that words can cut as deep as a blade? Kill, Rosala. You shouldn't come after me. Orzella rides on the ground and howls hysterically. I hate you. Oh, how I hate you all. I think we're done here. One of these nights we should meet up at the tavern to celebrate. Drinks are on me. We got a fiery spell weaver. Heavy pick plus five. Breastplate. Belt of physical perfection plus four. Pretty good. Mental perfection plus four. Mighty fist plus two. Ring of protection plus five. Some garbage. What did Yaws have though? Daggers plus four. Studded leather. Belt of incredible dexterity plus six. Which doesn't have con, which is annoying. Natural armor five. Cloak Resistance 5, Ring of Protection, or sorry, 4, and 4. Not the worst fight. Alright, that's where we're going to end off, I think. In the next video, we'll continue on our way and do some more quests. Maybe head to Polaris Fall. Something along those lines. We'll figure out some things to do. For now, though, I'll leave you here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care.